It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. So let the campaign begin, folks. We have some interesting things happening in the 17th Congressional United States Congressional District. Uh, and they're starting now. Uh, Dr. Dave Moylan, who is the Schuylkill County coroner, is running for the congressional seat. Uh, and his, um, you know, who was now uh, held by Congressman Matthew Cartwright. And I, I guess today, first of all, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, as always, Sam, it's a great pleasure. We have, you know, uh, the last time you were on, you were talking about different things, okay? And, um, you know, you would, let me ask you this. Why, do, as a, you're, you're now the you're Schuylkill County coroner, what made you decide to run for your, your Congress? Sam, it just boiled down to uh, one primary issue, and it's one that I feel strongly about, as, as do you, and that is the sanctity of human life. And I see that every day as a coroner, uh, why it's so important to defend human life from conception to natural death. And uh, when the uh, 113th Congress voted on the pain-capable Unborn Protection Act of 2013, which basically would prohibit late-term abortions, which could amount to about 15,000 um, babies a year. Matthew Cartwright uh, was nowhere to be found. He voted nay on that very important issue. It did pass, but it still has to be uh, enacted by the, uh, uh, the Senate and the President, of course. Now, you understand, of course, and, and what you've been hearing is the fact that, number one, yes, we understand abortion is important. To me, as an individual, of course, that's only my opinion, I think it's the most important when you're talking about human life. But although people sometimes are concerned about the economy, they're concerned about what direction the world's going, our country's going into. They're concerned about a lot of things, which I'm sure you, you, you in fact, we're going to address something today on the coal issue, which I think is very critical. Uh, and and uh, as I say sometimes, Dave, facts are ugly things because people sometimes when you talk about facts, you know, you've been hearing that you're going to have a tough road, you know, because you're going to be fighting a, a person from what we hear, don't know it for facts, we, uh, you're going to be fighting a person who actually have millions of dollars working, you know, that you're not going to, you know, there's no way in God's name that you'll be able to make it because you're fighting all this money. What, what, what do you, how do you respond when people tell you that? Well, Sam, I have been told that I'm on a fool's errand, basically trying to accomplish the impossible. But if I can just stand up and be counted for that one very important issue that we just alluded to, uh, I'll have achieved my goal. Well, of course, you're in it to win. From yes. what, yeah, okay. All right. Now, what I want to do is we, you, you brought some, some slides here and to give a, our, our audience a background as to um, what you're going to be talking about. Andy, why don't you put... Now, this, what we're looking at is, is your, the 17th con uh, United yes. States Congressional District. It's outlined in the light blue. Yeah. And, of course, it was a gerrymandered district, and you can kind of see the outline of a salamander there. But one thing does unite most of the district, which includes all of Schuylkill County, a good portion of Carbon County, okay, and then uh, the w part of Luzerne County and Lackawanna County, and that is the anthracite coal regions of Pennsylvania. And it runs uh, from the western part of uh, Schuylkill County, Tower City, straight up into uh, Lackawanna County. Okay, so the question I would have is, so what's the big deal? Why, why we should concern about the coal when we have all this stuff? So the next slide will begin to give us some okay. uh, information. This, uh, okay, we can uh, skip over that. Over That's that. the we overview. About yeah. that. Okay, so. And basically the history of the anthracite coal. Okay. And it started back in 1790 when Necco Allen, he was a hunter in Schuylkill County, and on the Broad Mountain he uh, went to... Uh, sleep and had his campfire get out of control. Next thing you know, an outcropping of anthracite was on fire. So he's accredited with uh, discovering it in uh, Pennsylvania and the United States. But it was in uh, five years later when uh, the anthracite uh, region uh, got into the industry of uh, coal and they uh, had an uh, anthracite-fired furnace uh, on the Schuylkill River. And then it wasn't too long after that, 1808, when a, a judge up in uh, Wilkes-Barre 
designed a grate for his tavern, and anthracite requires a, a air to be coming up under it, and he designed this grate, and that was the first uh, use for home heating, basically, or a small business of anthracite. And then uh, it was shortly thereafter, later on that year, that the Smith brothers got a commercial mine going in Plymouth, which is near Nanticoke. So that's kind of pretty much the, the history, and uh, it was very strong that contributed to the growth of the 17th district. Okay, so now we, we, the next slide uh, will tell us what, okay. Um, well, you know, coal has gotten a bad name, a bad ra yeah, rap, if you will. They, they, it's a dirty fuel. Exactly. But we are blessed in the 17th district with the best type of coal in the world, right. and that's anthracite. And this right. kind of compares the two. Uh, there's a little bit of geology here, but uh, the bituminous is a sedimentary thing that was layered out. The uh, metamorphic rock, rock is uh, the anthracite, and it was where mountains were formed. Great pressure, and that's what made uh, it uh, such a quality uh, mineral. But it's almost pure carbon, up to 98% carbon, and the bituminous is more like 60 to 80% with a lot of impurities. The sulfur, which is you know a, a toxin, high. and uh, also higher BTU, that concentration of carbon. It's a wonderful fuel. Now, it's kind of gotten uh, the association of uh, the byproduct, the coal residual, uh, the ash, basically. How do you dispose of that? And a lot of homeowners went over to oil when that became available in the 50s. But at my cancer center in New Philadelphia, we still heat with uh, anthracite. Okay, so the next slide is, and we're giving you an education here, okay, about now here we come into the things that are important for his district, okay, what, what I would assume, right? And very okay. much so, Sam. So, so let's start about the coal economy, and then, folks, we're going to get into the, uh, into the issue here about why it is so important and why Congressman Valletta on the same show, uh, on the Sam LaSanne show, time after time, talked about, you know, why anthracite is so very important. So pick it up from the coal economy right now, well, Dave. And the figures I'm quoting here are from... 2008, which were the most uh, latest available data. But uh, in our state, we believe that there's over 41,000 jobs that are related to the coal industry, either directly or indirectly. And what do I mean by that? I just had a patient come in the other day who was, uh, basically drives a truck to deliver the anthracite. Right. And he was saying how their uh, orders were, were off quite a bit. And that you know, he's in the uh, coal-related business, so that was thousands affecting of, him. In your district, there's thousands of jobs that are affected by coal. Directly. And <laughs> another example of this is Key Stoker, uh, which is an industry in Schuylkill Haven. They manufacture the stokers, the coal, coal feed uh, stokers. And uh, again, they could be affected by a downturn in the coal economy. But um, it's also estimated that for every direct minor job down in the in the pits or in, underground there's 3.77 indirect jobs so it's much larger than just uh, the the coal ind industry itself and another statistic uh, here is that uh, again in 2009 about 54 percent of the in-state utility uh, the power generation was from coal fired um, stations and earlier this summer Two were closed out in the western part of the state and threw about 350 people onto the unemployment line. And, um, but nationally, in say 2011, the, about 46% of the power was generated by uh, coal-fired uh, plants. Now it's down uh, currently to about 37, 38%. Now, l let's put this in perspective. Thanks, Andy. Uh, I think we have, do we have any more slides? Yeah, that's okay. about it. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, let me put this in perspective so our viewers could get an understanding here as, because of our prior discussion. We, what happens is the, the, the gasification plants that we have, all right, correct, are fueled by coal, all the things, and that creates electricity for us. And because we have that abundance of coal, we are enjoying lower prices with our PPL bills and our electrical bills because we have the coal to generate this. Am I correct? Yes, indeed. 
So we, all these plants that we see, these coal, coal gasification plants, are being fueled by coal. So it's critical, that I would think anyway, that coal is very, very important in your district as well as Luzerne County, as, you know, Barletta's district as well. Am I correct in saying that? Sam, every time you flick on that light switch, uh, you're um, dipping into the coal reserves. Yeah, and, and, and the point is they've been able to stabilize those prices over because that we have the abundance of coal. Once you do away with that, what's going to happen is the consumer is going to start seeing increases in their electrical Absolutely. bill. So that's why I think you're saying it's important, correct? And, uh, undoubtedly. And again, two of the big cities in the 17th, Diamond City, uh, that goes back to uh, Anthracite for Wilkes-Barre. Okay. And the Electric City, when Scranton got that uh, moniker in 1886, uh, they were the first U U.S. city that had trolley cars, electric trolley cars. Where do you think they got the electricity for the trolley car? And see, and so what, what I'm trying, I, I guess what you were trying to do is, as we say, I said again and again, facts are ugly things. Some people have to realize that when we put people in office, they affect our lives. Because I don't want to vote for you because you're a coroner, because your name is Moylan or your name is LaSanne. I want to vote for you if, if for anybody that's going to be able to take care of what my needs are, okay, as far as uh, my financial needs or my moral needs, etc. And coal is so very important to our area. Now, when we come back, folks, Dr. Moylan is running for the U.S. Congress. Uh, and he's been told, no secret, he's going to be running against a person who literally has have 10, what we hear, millions of dollars to run against uh, Dr. Moylan. Now, we'll have, I've had Congressman Cartwright on, the phone, on my show, and we'll have him on again. But he's speaking about his cause, the coal cause. When we come back, we'll see where was Congressman Cartwright voting in the fact that coal is so very important to us. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. Remember, 24-7, ssptv.com, my email, Sam at SSPTV.com. And folks, I'm open for anyone who wants to come on the show. It's going to be a political year. I'm asking you time after time again, vote for people who are qualified. Please vote for people who are qualified, not because they're nice people, they got this and they're nice, and you can never beat a person because he's an Irishman or Italian, etc. We're in a mess in this country today because we do that, folks. Pay attention to who's running. Now, I'm not supporting anybody here, but today, a uh, candidate who's running in the 17th Congressional District, Dr. Moylan, uh, is, is running against, uh, will be running against Congressman Cartwright. Now, speaking of Congressman Cartwright, uh, he had some votes, and we're saying how very important coal is for the economy in your district. So, uh, this slide that you brought with us, and Andy put this up, what does this mean? Well, there were three votes recently over the summer before the August recess that will impact the coal industry and people that work in and around that. And the first one was the Coal Residual Reuse and Management Act of 2013. It came to a House vote on the 25th of July. And basically it has to do with the disposal of coal ash, which is now under the uh, aegis of the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency. And you could see how manipulation of how you get rid of the, uh, the ash could affect your ability to use coal. So why would he vote nay? He, what, 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 when he votes nay, what is, what is he saying? Because I, I want to understand well, it. Ba basically, this would have turned it back over to the states, where the states, in Pennsylvania being an interested uh, party, such as uh, Kentucky or West Virginia, you know, they're going to have different views of how to deal with that ash. Now, of course, there's minimum federal standards that have to be adhered to, but basically it's almost a state's right issue to get it back to the, to the local government. And uh, again, it gives us more leeway on dealing with the uh, environmental impact of the coal, and he voted that it, it should just be um, an EPA uh, issue. So he wants the government to take over? Yes. Okay. Well, which, the, the federal government federal, rather which than Which is the, exactly what Obama wants. Yes. Okay. You know. Let's put it back again and let's look at the second one. Uh, the second vote he voted nay was, what's this one here? Well, basically uh, it's the Energy Consumer Relief Act. So that kind of says it all. But uh, before 
the EPA can put out an edict that will cost the consumers more than a billion dollars, it has to be uh, approved by Congress. So again, this is almost like w what we did in the Revolutionary War with King George, uh, taxation without our representation, his tyranny. And basically, he uh, put an A in on this, and uh, the Secretary of the Department of Energy would have to review these edicts coming out of EPA and see what the impact was going to be on energy prices and on uh, jobs. And the Congress would have a final say over it rather than, you know, a czar. Okay. All right, so the third one he voted against would, was and Again, what? I think the, uh, the, the, just the title of the amendment was Amendment 448 and was voted on on the 2nd of August. And by the way, all three of these uh, passed over Matthew Cartwright's nay vote. So I, but this has to do with congressional approval before a carbon tax could be levied on us. You know, uh, President Obama is doing so much by uh, executive order, the stroke of the pen, and taking it away from the elected representatives of the people. So, again, and I'm sure when I have Congressman Cartwright on here, he'll be ex he'll explain why he voted nay for those, but you're saying those three nay votes were certainly not good for the coal industry in, in, in your district, is that correct? Yes. Okay, all right, and they passed anyway, even though he voted yes. nay. Okay, uh, do you know how Barletta voted on that? He was in favor of all, all he, three he of them. He was in favor yes. of all three. And I would really look forward to working side by side with Congressman Barletta. Do you feel, uh, Dave, here again, you know, people know you in Schuylkill County because you're the coroner, um, and, you know, you certainly have a, with the Simon Kramer, you're doing wonders there. Your cancer treatment plant is, is, is fantastic. Do you feel that you really, um, you know, by presenting these causes, all right, do you feel that you are going to be able to bring um, the public's awareness to what we're, we're suffering right now. We see jobs, we see the coal industry getting clobbered, uh, and yet if we're, we're actually cutting our nose off despite our face, and people are not, should understand that, it only it's when you start paying the price, when senior citizens start finding out that why are my electric bills high? Why am I paying more for my fuel? Why am I paying this? And everyone's saying, but you have a good, you're living good, you're living good, but they're paying more. There's reasons for that. Yeah. Well, patients have asked me why am I uh, undertaking this crusade? And my answer was, I think I can help more people although I love what I'm doing on a daily basis, I think I can help more of my patients and citizens by moving on. Let me give you an example of when Congressman Barletto sat here, John Rich sat here, you sent it in, I must say it was bipartisan senator, you did check sat here, uh, you, you name it, sat on my show and we talked about the coal to liquid plant that John Rich wanted to start in 1998, nine. This was a plant that was going to be built at that time at $312 million to take coal and make it in fuel, people that we use for our gases. We would have had 5,000 uh, gallons or barrels a day produced. However, if they would have allowed them to do that back in 2000 today, we would be looking at 40 or 50 or 60 of these plants throughout the country. Our dependency on the giving money to the Middle East, based on these are all facts, would be 30%, which means we'd be paying less for our fuel. But politics played a picture there. Uh, they gave him, and, and he never wanted any money for, he never wanted grants. What he was looking for were loans. loans now, government. And he had support with Senator Santorum. He had support with uh, Congressman Barletta. He had, but however, he was, they're fighting a political thing. I don't know why. What would have been your stance if you would have been there? Well, I also want to comment that he also had the support of Timmy Holden, yes. who was our former uh, congressman. Um, uh, the, the technology is solid, and I believe he had some visitors come over from China, and I just went to the, the web a few days ago, and the Chinese have gotten the jump on us, and they have uh, plants churning out this. They already did it. They came here. Yeah. They looked at it. Yeah. They bought all the, they're buying all the engineering. It's a, now to build a plant like this, it's a billion dollars. Yeah. But here, the, the American people, we had, uh, again, Congressman Barlow is saying, we are sitting on tons of energy, but why are we giving, the, uh, and, and Barletta said, we're giving money every day to people who hate us. Yep. You know, they, they said oil is the mother's milk of terrorism, and we're doing this every day, and, 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 Cong and President Obama is, is, is anti-coal. 
Well, I'm just thinking of uh, some interviews I've seen with Donald Trump, and he says the Chinese are eating our lunch, and uh, China has about three quarters of the world's uh, coal reserves, and, you know and they're using it so well that they're importing the, coal. The, they're the bigger impo there's the biggest importer of coal. Whatever. Uh, you know, uh, doctor. So that's telling us something. Yeah. And right under our feet, yeah. we've got it. So we're fighting, you know, a, a cause here. You're fighting a cause here. I've been a strong supporter from this liquefaction plant from day one. And I applaud John Rich. I applaud, I applaud them because they spend out of their own pocket 15 millions of dollars to yeah. get this, uh, you know, they're going. And they ran, to me, they run into political nonsense and yeah. it could only help the public. Uh, I know you have, go ahead. What I was going to say was that um, the uh, technology is there, and I, I'm fully cognizant that there could be environmental impact from coal. But Sam, we put a man on the moon back in uh, the Kennedy days in nine well, years. Don't you think we can burn well, coal let, safely? Yeah, not only that, but they had the air permit issues. They had air. Per they had already had the, the permits of the air issued because it was clean from A1. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I, I know you were going to come on the show again and talk about other causes and Please. issues. Okay, Dr. Dave Molin, folks, running for the congressional slot in the 17th congressional district on Republican ticket. And yes, I will have you know Congressman Cartwright said any time he wants to be on the show, you know I will have Congressman Cartwright on the show. We want to lay facts out, folks. Uh, just vote for the person that you think is most qualified. Please don't vote because, you know, they're nice guys. And they, they vote for qualifications, folks. You, you know what we're living with today, folks. You seniors out there, you know how you're struggling every day. And they're going to tell you you're doing well. You're giving up prescriptions. You're giving up, you know, uh, the, the fact that you have, you're giving all this stuff up, folks. And they're saying you're living well. It's sad. Doctor, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. We'll see you next time.